Let me know, I'm gonna get started here. Let me know also if you can see the slide. I almost said good morning. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good Monday. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> Every day is pretty much the same here in New York. <laughs> can everybody hear me? Well, some days it snows. Tomorrow we're supposed to get another seven inches, so we'll see. We shall see. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have questions, you can plop them in the room, and I will answer them as we go along. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and I also appear on TV. Sometimes I'm on Cirrus Radio talking about stocks and the market, which of course I love to do. Market's been running up. Market made brand new all-time highs again today. Almost seems like the market will never ever stop. We will go over some charts and talk about the market if we have time at the end. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture of New York. This is an old picture of New York. So today I'm gonna to talk about trading on the side of institutional money. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. I do answer the phone when I can, so you can feel free to reach out. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I put a lot of videos on YouTube. That's probably the best place to follow me. Uh, I am taping this webinar tonight, so you can go to view YouTube and rewatch it if you subscribe. And every time I post a video, you get a notification as well. Great, thank you, Kathy. And you can also watch me, like I said, on TV. This was a spot I did about a week ago in Ameritrade. I think it was a week from today. In fact, I talked about the overall market and I also talked about GME, so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit tonight as well, if we have time. But it is still the beginning of 2021. I've been thinking about my own life a lot. You know, I like to set goals. People have New Year's resolutions for me. I don't really have New Year's resolutions. Uh, for me, I have goals. I say, these are the goals this year. These are the things that I want to accomplish this year. These are the things that I want to do. And I think it's it's really a good time, and it's not too late. Just because it's February 8th does and not January 1st, it doesn't mean it's too late for you to think about your goals for 2021. Or if you want to become a trader, it's not too late. You have most of the year left, and you can still trade with me. And if you are trading and you're not doing well, it's not like it's too late. We're a month into the year, okay? So it's very, very early in the year for you to turn your year around if you haven't had a good start to the year. And for those of you that know me, you know that I'm very intuitive. For those of you that don't, take my word for it, I'm very intuitive. And I've noticed that, and I've noticed just when communications, and most of them are with complete and total strangers, to be honest with you, uh, that people are struggling in the market this year. I don't, I don't know what to make of that, I don't know why. I don't really think the market's been choppy. But I've noticed I can, I can get a feel for things hearing communications from complete and total strangers that traders, day traders, are losing money this year. GME aside, okay, just in general, I'm getting a feeling for that by reading the communication from complete strangers that will reach out to me. And again, I don't know why. But that tells me something very interesting. I think sometimes people get into a habit or a pattern of doing a set thing, and it works for a little bit of time. I'm talking about a, a, a trading strategy. It works for a period of time, and then it stops working. Well, ultimately, that, that strategy didn't really have longevity, didn't really work for the long haul. If you want to trade and do this for years and years and years and years and years, then you need a strategy that's going to work in any market conditions and for the long haul, and really for day trades or long-term trades. So I do day trades and options, which you can hold overnight. I, I created my strategy in 2008, and it's 2021. So I've been doing nothing but this for a very long time, okay? So suffice to say, what I do does have longevity and can work in all market conditions. That being said, the market is bullish most of the life of the market. We're in a bullish market right now. Like I said a little bit ago, we just made brand new all-time highs today. Is that going to continue? I'm just reading it as it comes, to be honest with you. For those of you that know me for a long time, I prefer to short, but I will go long. So we've been going long and short in this market so far in 2021 because it is whatever it is, whatever the trades are there. 
today as our day trade. I don't have it here in the program, but I'll tell you, we went long the diamonds, which is an ETF for the Dow. So that was our day trade today. We went long, all right? The market gapped up and we went long it. These are the stats from through Friday. Friday was a losing day. And the ironic thing is that I was actually up at one point on Friday in the QCOM and I just didn't get out of it. But overall, it has been a very good start to the year. And last week was a winning week. I think when you choose to trade and when you decide to trade, you have to have a set plan of action before you enter the trade and also why are you are doing the trade. So every ticker symbol here from BA, which was the first trade of the year, up until the diamonds, which I just told you today was a winner. We went long. Every trade has a, a gap. OK, I'm always doing gaps. So everything I do is based on a stop gapping. Now, there could be gap ups or could be gap downs. Like I said, diamonds was a gap up today, but everything is based on a gap. So that's all that I do. And that's how I found a lot of success. I'm not trend trading. Like if something's going wiggly jiggly up and down, up and down, I'm not looking for an entry in a trend or to go with the market. I'm looking for a set specific thing to do, uh, whatever ticker symbol I'm trading. Like QCOM, we did do last week after the earnings. I forget what day that was. I, I want to say it was Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was Thursday. And that had a gap, okay? It was a bearish gap and we shorted it. And we also did a put in it. We did an option in it. I think I have that in here. If not, I'll talk about QCOM at the end. And again, if you have any questions to go along, just plop it in the room. But you really have to make the time to trade. And not only that, if you decide you want to learn my system, you have to make the time to learn it. My class is a two-day class, so it's a time investment to learn from me, besides the fact that it is a monetary investment. The time and money is worth it, but you have to set aside the time to trade. Now, once you know the system and you're doing it and you're in a groove, the benefit is, though, it doesn't take that many hours a day to trade. Like we were done, I was done with the room this morning. I think I shut the room down at 10, 15, 10, 30. Maybe it might've even been 10 o'clock. We did not take a long time in that trade today. We were in and out pretty quick. And I found I make the most money, actually, when I'm in trades the shortest, okay? At least for the day trades, all right? So it does not take a long time to be in and out of the trade, but you have to set that side, that time aside and block it out in your schedule. So if you're working, or again, depending what time zone you're in, the market opens at 9.30, I'm usually focused on entering my trades between 9.30 and 10. I may hold it a little bit past 10, but I'm definitely usually out of everything by 11 o'clock. I mean, I, it's really rare that I would open, open the room and keep it open till, till noon, okay? Now, if you're doing options, and that's what you want to learn from me, well, you can put the trade on and put an exit order to sell it at 50% or 100% or whatever you want to do if you can't watch the trade. Obviously, ideally, if you do an option, you would want to watch it to see if it goes to the target. But if it does not, you can still get out with profit without being right in front of the screen. With day trades, you really have to be in front of the screen. So you have to be able to trade at least for one hour a day or half an hour a day in the morning, Monday through Friday. And really, Mondays is the slowest days. So if you're going to block out three, four days a week you want to train, I'd say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay, are probably the busiest days. And again, I'm seeing some people come in late. If you have questions, you can just plop it in the room. Okay, so getting back to what I was saying, plan of action for the year, plan of action for how much money you want to make, plan of action for the strategy that you want to do and just an overall plan of action. You know, yesterday was the Super Bowl. I didn't watch the whole thing. I thought the game was better than all the commercials and everything else and even the halftime show. I knew that, you know, Tom Brady was gonna win. Why? He had his mind that he would win. He probably had made up his mind that he was gonna go and win before he even went to Florida. So, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, but this is particularly, I'm speaking about myself personally and the way that I've, I've, I think about things and just my own life experiences and people that I have known as well, is that me personally, when I set my mind on something, instead of goal on something, I'm able to make it happen and I'm very focused, almost like a lightning rod. And athletes, okay, sports athletes who are successful are very much like that too. There's many, many athletes out there that are talented and have the strength and endurance and ability to be able to succeed. The mind, the mind creates the difference sometimes between that extra oomph that it takes 
uh, the mental fortitude or whatever you want to call it to succeed. And you could, you could even feel that in the game last night if you watched it. By the time the score was 9-28, I turned it off because I knew the Buccaneers were going to win. And at the beginning, the tone was kind of set where there was a push, 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 where Florida was just like moving ahead, scoring and scoring and scoring. And then, you, you know, once you gain that momentum, you're, you just take it to the end. And trading is like that too. Uh, you know, when you're in a good groove, if you've ever been in a good trading groove, it just snow piles on itself and you just got it going. The difference between people that are successful and people that are not successful in the market are really winners versus losers, is that people, everybody loses in the market sometimes, okay? Even I, I told you we lost on Friday, but I shake it off, come back, boom, I'm right back on the horse, okay? You, that winning mindset, that overall, that you can win and you are a winner, is the make or break you, especially with trading. That being said, you have to have a strategy, which I do, that wins more than loses, but it doesn't mean you're gonna win in every trade, because you're not, because I don't, and nobody does. That's an impossibility, okay? But you have to be able to get right back on the horse. There are many, 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 many people trading the market, more now than ever. Again, I don't wanna get too off discussion about the Robin Hood debacle, but Robin Hood has made it possible for many people to trade that don't know what they're doing and don't have a lot of money, okay? But that has meant more volume in the market, and actually more money for someone like you or anyone like me to take from the people that don't know what they're doing. I hate to say it, but that's what it is. When you are trading, you are not creating anything. I'm not sitting here, you know, knitting a sweater or a scarf, okay? I'm actually taking money away from somebody else when I book it in my account. Someone is going the opposite. People shorted the market today over the high and we went long. I took someone else's money when I booked my profits, okay? And that is really what trading is. So the smartest, strongest are the ones that win and the weakest lose. And one of the things that I think is beneficial coming to me is I like to win, okay? That's just my mindset. And I get very frustrated sometimes when I do have a losing day, but I get so frustrated sometimes that I come back the next day and have an even bigger day. So, you know, that kind of winning mindset going back to sports is what you want to have with someone on your team or someone that you're learning from, like a mentor, like if you came from me. So everyone wants to win, but the fact is that not everyone will win. Many, many people will have a weak mindset, a losing mindset, and it is very easy to spill into that. And again, going back to the snowball effect, the snowball effect works in both ways. You can snowball into a groove and have a nice positive day and be up a lot of money, or you can snowball the opposite direction and losing, losing, losing to the point that you blow up your account, okay? I've, I've, I've watched this happen with friends or people or even people that I've told not to do certain things that have come and tried to learn from me where people risk their whole account in one trade, which is a big no-no. But the fact is everybody is an independent person and everybody has to go through their own process. But what the market is, is it's set up that not everyone will win. And in fact, it's just set up that only a small percentage will win. But the beautiful thing about what I do is, as one individual, I only need a small piece of the billions and billions and billions of dollars that are in the market at any one second or moment in time. And you only need that too. You don't need, you know, you just need like a, like if I were to make a pie graph here, which I don't have in here, like if I would make a little sliver, it would just be that sl tiny sliver that you would need, just a boop of the market, of the money in the market that you would be happy with, okay, to take out because there's just so much money in the market like I was talking about. So you have to be smart about the trades that you take. And I'm gonna go back to the GME because I called it. I called what was gonna happen with that. I knew it was gonna gap down. In fact, I, I said it on that Monday and I did it the next day. Monday, a week ago, I said it was gonna fall. It was gonna collapse. It, I didn't know it was gonna do a Tuesday morning, but it literally did. Many, many people took that trade. They didn't know what they were doing. I talked to some people here in my building. They bought that stock around 300 something. One of the guys downstairs, the one of the doormen, I have to talk to him. I don't know if he sold out of it. I mean, it, I don't know if it's ever going to go back to that price. It probably won't. So you have to be smart about the trades that you take. You can't just follow people willy-nilly. And one of the, the best decisions I made, actually, for people's health of their success in the business was to require people to have taken my class before they join my live trading room so that people understand why I'm doing the diamonds or why I'm shorting QCOM or why... We're, we're going long Google or whatever we're happening to do, okay? 
if you understand something, then it doesn't feel like gambling because it really isn't gambling. Trading should not be gambling for you. And if it is, then you don't understand what you're doing. You have to have a set strategy for doing what you're doing for risking the money. Because if it starts to feel like gambling, pro chances are you don't know what you're doing, okay? If you learn it and you say, this is a good gap because, and you can actually put it into a sentence, then, then you understand it, then you risk the money, then it becomes something that is not gambling, but actually a concrete process or a business that you were doing. Oh, here, I did put this in the, in the thing. So this was a dumb trade. It made no sense. Um, and actually, you know, some people did end up making money with this by, again, dumb luck. You can make money sometimes in bad trades. The danger to that is that you will replicate that bad trade over and over again and consequently lose the money that you made in the one chance that you took it and made money by dumb luck. This, this, uh, this chart, and again, the SEC is investigating what happened here because they called it a pump and dump because people were in this pumping it up and saying to buy it, buy it all the way down here when it was in the 20s. It started to get popular here right around this point when the stock skyrocketed up from like 100 all the way up to 500. I don't think it quite got to 500 here. It did in the pre-post market, but on this live day, I think it was around 470 and change. It never set up right as long, at least not for me, and we couldn't short it. And although there were puts that you could have done, the puts were so crazy they made no sense that the best thing to do was to stay away from this. But ultimately, people were trapped in this now because people were saying it was gonna to go to 1,000, why? Why? There's, there's nothing here to indicate this would go to 500 and there's nothing here to indicate this would go to 1,000 and there's certainly nothing in here whatsoever at all to indicate that this is ever, ever gonna go up again. So, I mean, this really was a dumb trade and unfortunately, some people are gonna take their lickings with this and learn and maybe some people won't learn and they won't learn, they won't learn and understand that you really have to know what you're doing when you're trading. So the most important thing that I want you to walk away with from today is that you have to be smart about the trades you take. I can't feel sorry for people that take dumb trades. I mean, I, I, I really don't feel sorry for anyone at all that takes dumb trades. You have to decide what you're doing and you have to think about your risk too. If you have $10,000 in an account and you know what you're doing and you have a strategy and, and you actually are following, someone that knows what they're doing too, you still have to think about how much you're risking. You can't risk $5,000 in one trade. That would be crazy. That would be 50% of your account. Pretend you had a million dollars. Would you risk 500,000 in one trade? What if you would lose it? Like the GME, that's what people were doing. They were throwing their rent, their mortgage, their everything, their whole paycheck in that stock. You have to be smart about the trades you take and you have to be smart about the risk you take too. And it should be based on a percentage of your account of your cash account. Now, I don't wanna to talk too much about margin, but Options, you don't need margin to take the trades. Day trades, you need margin to take the trades. You can trade at a retail account on a four to one margin. You can trade at a prop place on a 10 to one margin. So you do not need several million dollars or even several hundred thousand dollars to day trade. Even if you wanna take a thousand shares of something, for example, okay? You get margin. And if you don't understand that more, you can email me and I'll explain it. I'll explain it um, in an email to you because I don't wanna go off on a tangent about that right now. Or you can just call a broker, okay? But you can day trade without 100 grand, okay? Even my strategy, you can trade my strategy with a small account. And so many people say, well, I have to have this much money or I won't do well. That's not true. That's not true at all. It's just that you have to be satisfied if you can only take 500 shares of something rather than 3,000 shares of something. You have to understand that you're gonna have to build a slow account over time. I, there's nothing really to cover about GME other than what I said, Rakesh. If it, it really does, it's really not consequential to this lecture. Um, but I'm taping this, so you can go back and listen to it. You can go back and listen to it later. It was a dumb trade by, for anyone to do, is my point. There was absolutely no strategy to it whatsoever at all. Anyways, I use a 26-point checklist, which I use daily to trade. So I get up, I find a gap, I rate that gap, I, I rate bullish gaps, and I rate bearish gaps. If they rate per my system 20 points or more, then I take the trade in the direction of the gap on the live day. Not in the pre-market, not in the post-market. It depends if I do it as an option or a day trade. I do not do every trade the same, meaning I don't always do, like I said, we did the QCOM put and we shorted QCOM as a day trade. I don't do that all the time, okay? So sometimes I do an option and a day trade in the same symbol, sometimes I do not. Like I'm not day trading Google, okay? It's too expensive, it only makes sense really to do it, in my opinion, as an option. So the reality is I have a system that I have everything figured out way before the open, okay? 
usually as early as eight o'clock. I know what I'm doing on the day. And most of the options I send out in the pre-market. Now, sometimes I will call a trade during the day, an option, okay? But when I close the room, we're pretty much done. Once in a blue moon, I might send a late trade out in the room, but that's like, you know, once a month or something. Typically when I'm day trading, I'm day trading in the morning. But I know what I like right away, okay? Before 9.30. And I know what direction I'm doing it. And I know what I think of the market. Like I knew this morning what I thought of the market. And it did what I thought, okay? I knew it would be higher, but I knew it would be choppy. I knew the right thing to do was to get out quick. And that's exactly how the whole day set up. And again, if we have time, we'll talk about that. But overall... I call my system the gold, golden gap, the rating system, because it is like finding gold in the market because I know where it's going to go, up or down, and I know it before the open, which is great, okay? Now, I'm not predicting the gap itself. I don't know what earnings are going to say. I don't know what they're going to say about Amazon or Google or whatever's out this week. I don't, I don't know what's out this week. Cisco's out this week. That's something that's coming out this week, I think, one of the nights. I don't know what the report's going to say when they when they have the earnings report, but I know that it's going to do something, and then when it does it, then I rate it, okay? Being able to predict the directional bias of a stock is, is highly, highly, highly um, advantageous, and that is the reason for my success. Because if you know something's going to go, um, here, I'm gonna just pull this up really quick. This is an option we did today, hold on. I saw this late. It was Disney. I didn't even see it in the morning because I did other stuff. And I don't even know why it was gapping up. I saw it in the morning after I was done day trading. And I saw this was going to go to 190. And at the time that I saw it, it was hovering right around here. I called the 190 calls. It wasn't too late. And I knew it was going to go there. I knew it was going to go there immediately. And it did. It went through today. I went through it. So I knew when I saw this here, like this is all I saw. To look at what time I sent it. I saw that, I said, oh my God, this is going to 190. Sent the trade out, boom. What did it do? Boom, went, went in two hours. Now, how did I know that? Because I looked at the gap and I rated the gap. Now here, going back, you could say, oh, well, of course it did it. But if you were in the letter, you got the trade. You got the trade in time to do it. So, you know, being able to predict the direction that something's going to go, and even the number two, okay, is extremely advantageous because ultimately that is how you will make money. You will make money when you get in before it goes. And that was the problem with, oh, I was talking about the GME. It went. It it went to 500, and the people were scrambling to buy it at 300, 400, thinking it was going to go to a thousand well it was too late okay anyways any questions here so far so this is the spy daily this was back the beginning of the month this was february 1st february 2nd so that was about a week ago february 2nd we we did again another long we went long this um bought it had a nice rally up again if you did not want to buy this as an equity train 2,500 shares is a lot. That's an advanced risk. But if you did, you could have made over six grand. Now, if you wanted to take 250, fine. You would still would have gotten a $3 move almost. Now, let me go back to show you the daily. So this gapped up, closed here, gapped up. I rated it. I said it's so long. Got the setup, got the rally. Boom. Okay. And actually, this went farther than that exit in the morning. We got out of this pretty early in the morning. You could have done a call in this if you didn't want to do the equity trade. A call is an option, okay? You could have just called the, I bought the 380 calls. Or you could have bought above the strike. Now here was the one minute, okay? So I traded the one minute chart. First I figure out the daily if I want to do it. Then I get onto the one minute to take the entry. So here was the day before it. This was the first. Closed here, gapped up. Boom. Again, this is the spot. This is the market. I don't even remember why this gapped up. I don't remember what day the second was. Anyways, we, we just got in it. it. We got in it and poof, it just ran right out and went and went and went. So this was a really, 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 really strong move by the market on this particular day. Again, it was February 2nd. 
Actually, that was last week, so. So yeah, so the fifth was Friday. Yeah, I think this was Tuesday. So it was a nice move. So again, when you day trade, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. How did I figure this out? Based on the gap, which I saw when? In the pre-market. And that's when I rated it. And I said, I like the spy today. It's gonna rally, we're gonna go long. And again, I don't do the market every day. Someone emailed me about that, Thomas. I don't know if he's here. He emailed me about a trial. It's just that the, the markets have the setups lately. It's not like I, I mean, I'd, I'd rather trade stocks like Qcom every day, but to be honest with you, some of the earnings haven't worked out right. Like eBay had earnings and it wasn't, it didn't set up right. And so we didn't do that. I mean, so I'm doing the market because the market's been good. Here's the chart. Can you see it? This is the daily. This is the one minute. Phil can't see it. Can everybody else see the one minute and the spy? Here, I'll click on and off. Maybe I just had to reset it because I was back and forth with the charts. Can you see it now? Galahad sees it. Phil, can you see it? It's squished small so you could see that whole period of the previous day and then into the morning. Kathy, can you help Phil because he can't see it? Can everybody else see it? Okay. Anyways, that was one day. What else did we do? Like I said, I prefer to do specific ticker symbols like companies, things you know, like IBM. So I rated the Golden Gap in IBM. And again, I just, I, I don't have any set prerequisite. I get up, I say, okay, this is gapping. Let me make a watch list. Let me go through, boom, boom, boom. And I rate them. And I first really go to the short side first. Why? Because short moves happen fast and I prefer to get in and out quickly. So I do go to the short side first. If I don't see any good shorts, then I will look at the bullish gaps, which is why we did the diamonds today. But I first look at shorts, okay? Now here was IBM back on, this was January 22nd. Stock closed here, gap down, boom, fell. Mm, this was a good one. What happened here? Well, it, got, it sold off, okay, it sold off. Now getting back to the theme of today, institutional money, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more here. How did that occur, okay? Institutional money sold IBM. The stock was up here the night before at roughly 131.25 and change. Opened in the morning here around 120 and change, okay? So it got dumped, okay? It sold off. Now, does this mean that every gap down you can short? No. Does it mean that every gap up you can go long? No. That is why I qualify them and rate the gap in the pre-market in the morning, okay? You have to go through a process. And actually, I'll just show you here. For example, this gap here, this closed here, this was a gap up. Gapped up here in the 200 period moving average. It did not rally. Guess what? It sold off. Now, I did not do this, but I'm just showing you here an example where you couldn't have bought a gap up, okay? So it's a very, very specific criteria that I use. This is what you come and learn from me in the class. How do I know? that IBM is gonna fall. And again, we just did this as a day trade. And I happened to do the put on that day too. You can see the volume down here. So here was the entries and I showed a beginner risk here for you too. I mean, what's wrong with making 500 some bucks? 250 shares. Anyone that trades should be able to afford that even with a price point of 120 at IBM. So an advanced trader risk of 2,500 shares, profit would have been 56.25. It was a very nice trade. Beginner risk, 250 shares, profit 562.50. Again, very nice trade. Quad Boy's been with me since December. He was trading before he met me, but he didn't learn my system till he met me, and I kind of just put it all together for him. He's doing extremely, extremely, extremely well. He just, he just listens to me and just hits it every day, and he doesn't question it. So going back here to the chart, this was January 22nd. It was a nice one. Okay, and again, this is a day trade short, all right? Now, oh, here's the one minute, here we go. You can really see it. This was the 21st, here's the 22nd. Again, what am I looking for? The gap. Stock closed here the night before, boom, gap down in the morning. So before this sucker opens here, I'm figuring out wherever this is trading, whatever's going on, I'm seeing that the stock is gapping. I'm looking at the daily chart. 
not the one, but the daily, and then I'm rating it based on my 26 point rating system. Is this going to go lower or is it going to flip and go higher? In which case, say for example, the rating would be 15. Well, then I wouldn't short it. I'd say, well, it's either gonna not work at all or it's gonna push back and rally and then I'm not gonna go long it. So I don't flip it around, okay? I stick strict to the system of what I'm doing, okay? Because I'm looking for institutional money that's coming into the stock. Is it gonna grab hold of it and buy it or is it going to sell it or short it, okay? And that's what you're seeing actually in GME. I believe that short positions have come in, slap that sucker down. They're not gonna let it go back up. Nobody's gonna buy it with any real money anyways. Nobody really did. And they're gonna smush those suckers, the people that are left in it now, they're still in positions over 300, 200, whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if that stock collapses and goes back down to $20 in the next couple of months. Could be in the next couple of weeks. But that's how institutional money is. It supports a stock or it doesn't, in which case then it pushes it down, all right? In the case of the market, as you're seeing today, and again, I'll bring up the market charts here when I'm done, the market is being bought. I mean, it just is. It's just flat out, full out being bought. All the market indices are being bought. In fact, the market's one of the strongest things right now in any chart that you look at. I mean, the market's at new highs. Amazon isn't. Now, Google is, but Amazon isn't. And Amazon is usually a beast in the market. Apple isn't either. Let's talk about Facebook. This was another golden gap back in January, I think. Yeah, this was end of January. This was a day trade. Great trade, why? Let it drop, held it, boom, boom, boom. This was a big stop. 1,500 shares, you could have made 61.50. 200 shares, you could have made 820. Here was the drop. Boom, fell. We shorted this, okay? Now, here was this particular day. Again, this is a one minute chart and I squished it really, really small so you could see it, okay, how it just collapsed and fell off a cliff. So the nice thing about institutional money when you're following it is you don't have to think that hard. You don't have to do that much. It's just there, it just goes poof, and it just does it. Like the Disney trade I just showed you today. Disney was getting bought. It wasn't too late to get in it. It was like, oh, it's gonna go, it's getting bought. Boom, you buy it, doop, it goes, you're out. That's it, done, trade, off, go on with your day, go on with your life, okay? Every trade that I take, it's just a trade. While there are some trades that we happen to be in that go skyrocketed where there are thousands percents return on investment or whatever, that is, not, that is not something that happens all the time. In fact, that hasn't happened for a while, okay? It's, you know, you just take a trade and you get in and, and, and you get out. And sometimes you get lucky in it and it, and it falls off a planet. This was a big move though, to be honest with you, for Facebook. I mean, to get a four or $5 move, something like this, an intraday, it, this was a big move. But you know, trading, like I was talking about earlier, is not gambling because you're not looking to get rich quick by doing it. You're looking to chunk it out. Take this, get out, book it. Take this, get out, book it. Take this, get out, book it. And then all of a sudden you have all these winners and you're like, wow, I made a lot of money this week. Didn't seem like it at the time, but I did. 500, 600, 700, 800, one loser. 500, 600, 700, 800, one loser. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm up a couple thousand dollars. So, you know, you have to look at it like that in the bigger picture per week, per month, and overall for the year. Like I was saying about set your goals for the year. And just because you're behind for the year, if you're doing, you know, silly things since January 1st, it doesn't mean you can't get back on track because you will have those trades. You will have those trades where things will just happen and all of a sudden they'll just come out of nowhere and be super duper big. This is another one we did, Netflix. Uh, this was a couple weeks ago now, third week of January. Now this was expensive, but you could have bought calls in it if you didn't want to go long the day trade. We did this and it was very expensive. Now I don't always trade stocks at this price point, just so you know. I'm familiar with Netflix. I know how this stock works. I feel very comfortable trading Netflix. Um, it was a huge trade. Now, we did do an ad in it. So we entered it long here. Again, if you didn't want to buy the equity trade, and, and 200 shares seems not like a lot, but it actually was for this because it was a $3,000 risk. So if you had took 100 shares, it would have been a $1,500 risk. Then I added at a certain position, which was fine because I knew it was going to go. Got out of 590. This was a huge trade, but you can see the bar. Now, if you're like, I can't afford to take this with the margin, Melissa, even 500 shares. Well, some places allow you to do odd lots, 
okay? Retail places do, or you could have bought calls. So if we enter at 567, buy calls at 568, or wherever you can get them, 570, okay? If it's moving in the right direction and moving up, and obviously that would have worked, this went to 590. We did do options trades in this as well. This was one also that if I do an option and I do a Drake trade, I really, really like it a lot, okay? So this was a nice mover. Here is the one minute. I just want to show this. So again, closed here, gapped up. In the morning, I looked at it. I figured it out. I said, Netflix is higher. We got to get into this today. And we looked for the setup and we did it and it went, okay? So again, these are very squished, but this is a one minute chart. This back here is the daily. This is how I'm determining when I see the gap in the pre-market in the morning that I want to go long it or short it or not do it at all. I decided I wanted to go long it. I predicted it was higher. I was right. In fact, that this is still higher. I don't know when, but I haven't looked at this today. I'm waiting this out for the right timing here for this. This will get to 700. I don't know when. I can tell you I'm going to get it when it does go there because it's on my radar. Any questions here so far? So getting back to the point I was saying before, trading isn't gambling. That's why you need a system. My system predicts where the stock's gonna go before it does it. And I figured this all out in the pre-market in the morning. And I'm looking for institutional money. The institutional money is how a stock can go. 50 points in a day, $3 in a day, four or $5 in a day like Facebook. What moves stocks? Money. Big, 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 big money. Again, what happened in GME was an anomaly. And as you saw, it, it, it slapped right back down, okay? Because if you don't have institutional money supporting a position, it's not going to go anywhere. And that is, that is what happened with that and why that's such a good chart to uh, show as an example of that. So the Golden Gap system, that's a system that I trade, system that I created myself. And if you want to come learn my system, the class is this weekend, but it pinpoints institutional money in the market, whether it's buying or selling. How am I doing it? I'm looking at the daily chart. I'm looking at the gap. And I'm figuring it all out, like I said, in the pre-market. Institutional money is in control at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. That was the tricky thing with GME for a lot of people. They said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this went from 20 to 500. Yeah, but even if you think it's not there, it is. And, I, and I'm trying to think of another chart to explain that. I'll try to think of one that I can explain that uh, uh, something else, but that's a, just a good, good current example because people think that institutional money is not in control, but they are. And that is the genius really behind my system because you might do something and you think you're certain that it's going a certain direction. You swear up and down it is. Everything lines up, all these indicators you're looking at, whatever. And then it does something the exact opposite of what you think it's gonna do and you don't understand why. You don't understand why it's completely lost to you, but not to me because I'm reading the gaps, not indicators that are on a chart, you know, and all these other things that people put on their charts, which I don't have a lot of stuff on my charts. My charts are very, very clean because I need to read the price. I need to read the gap. In fact, I could trade with nothing at all. I could trade reading the tape. And that's something very unique too because it is the price. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Where's the price today? And where was the price yesterday? That's very important to me, okay? And then I see what happened today and again, we'll look at the market. We'll see where the market closed today because I didn't really look at it right at four. And where, is it, where are we going tomorrow? Okay. Anyways, this is a chart of the SPY. This was back from Friday. Any questions here so far? So if you want to trade, you can do it from home. You can do it from your job if you are working in an office. A lot of people are going back to work now slowly, slowly, slowly. But some people are choosing to stay at home even though they can go back to work because their employer is letting them. Either way, if you can't trade full-time, you don't need to trade my system full-time. You just need the morning. That morning period is all that you really need to be able to trade. And if you can't even do that and get in the room, you could do the options. Like I said, put the trade on when you get the email, and then you put an order out to sell it at 50% or 100% or whatever you decide you want to do, okay? So really, success in trading is very similar to success in life. It's about making good choices. 
okay? You, you, you just got to make good choices. And if you don't make good choices, you're going to have problems, okay? And this is true in trading, and this is true in life, okay? I had a friend call me about the GME. He was asking me about it. This was when all the hype was two weeks ago, whenever. I said, don't buy it. Do not buy it. At that time, it was like at 400 or 350. I said, don't buy it. Don't do it. And he luckily listened to me. He didn't know a thing about trading. Never traded in his life, and he was going to buy it. Okay. He would have lost all the money he put into it. You have to make good choices. Why are you taking the trade? How much are you risking? And before you take it, where are you going to get out? You don't have to know the exact number. Like, I didn't know exactly what I was going to get out of the, out of the diamonds today. Do -ba -do -ba -do. I, I know, like, I have an area. I said this morning in the room, I said, you know what? If I get 50 cents out of this today, I'm happy. If I get a dollar out of this, I'm happy. If we get this up to, you know, whatever number, I'm happy. You have an idea. This is not an exact science as far as, you know, where you're exiting something, okay? Sometimes I make more than 100% in a trade. It goes bigger than I think. Sometimes I get out and I make 52% and the next day an option goes 100%. Yeah, but I made money today. I booked it. Tomorrow I don't know what it's going to do. I, it was just a trade, okay? This is where the gambling, you got to take the gambling off the table. And Galahad, are you here? I think that was something that you had a problem with. I, I never really, I really thought you were a very conservative person, but it, I think you really have kind of a little bit of a gambler, gambler mentality. Because you gamble when you're up in something and you don't get out. I'm not talking about being up a little bit. I'm talking about being up, you know, a good amount. You risk 3000 in a train, you know, you're up 1800 bucks. Well, if you don't get out, Tomorrow you may not be up 1800 You might be down, you know? So, you know, you have to look at it like every trade is just a trade. It's not the end of the world if you lose. And your goal is to win more days than you lose. And if you think of it like that, then you'll be okay. All right? How do you get to the goal if you want to do this for a living? Make good choices. It's discipline and trade selection. Have a plan of action. Have a good system. Take quality entries. You know, and don't over trade. Do not be afraid to, to not trade if there's something not good. I thought about not trading today. But then the setup came, we did it. But I, I kind of was like, man, I might not trade today. Because if the, if the diamonds hadn't set up, we wouldn't have done anything. And then don't be piggish about targets if your goal is in for the day. You chunk it out. You chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. This is the point that I'm trying to make here where you can really make some headway. There's, there's a mix in the room. Some people have large accounts. Some people have small accounts. Some of the people that have small accounts are doing very well. They're happy when they make $150. They're happy when they make $200. Okay? Yes, they'd like to make thousands, but they're not there yet. The goal is to make money, whatever it is. Making money is always better than losing money. Don't confuse being a risk taker, which anyone that trades is, because you're, you, you have to risk money in order to, to make money, okay? Just like if you're, if, you're, if you're investing in real estate, you want to invest in real estate. Now, some people buy a home because they want to live there, and they want to just, they're just going to live there forever. But they're still really investing in it because they're purchasing a home rather than renting. Some people buy a house because they want it as an investment. They think that it's going to go up in value and they want to sell it in six months or a year and make a profit, okay? Either way, you have to look at what you're doing. It's taking the amount of money that you have and flipping it and turning it around. It's a lot faster to turn your money into something to trade and make money than it is in sticking it in a bank. Even if you put your money in a five-year CD right now, I don't even think you could get it at 2%. In fact, I'm not even sure if you could get 1% right now in a certificate of deposit. You might be able to for five years somewhere. But the rates right now for savings are horrific. I've never seen them this bad. Of course, I'm young. But, you know, you can flip your money and turn it over 100% really in the market over and over and over with good trades. And even 50% is really good, particularly if you're in a choppy market environment. And if you're trading a lot, which we are, we're doing, we're active, okay? Active every day in the day trade room, active every day, every day in the options letter, we're active. There's plenty of trades to get. So how much does it take to achieve your goals? Break it down. Break it down in a way that you can wrap your head around it. If you can wrap your head around, you know, taking a thousand shares and booking 50 cents, 
Okay, fine. Then that, then you're gonna take a thousand shares and book five hundred dollars in every trade that you take. Do something that you can mentally wrap your head around it, whatever that goal is. If the idea of, of making twenty grand a month is too, you can't possibly fathom it because you've been losing trading for years. Then say, you know what? You're gonna your goal is to make a thousand bucks in a week. That would be better if you've been losing. And a thousand dollars a week is what? It's four grand a month. That's not half bad if you've been losing trading for years and years and years. So choose numbers that that you can you can actually succeed that you can actually do something that you can actually achieve the goal whatever the goal is that you want to to make whatever amount of money that is and really i find people's actual goals are very realistic but the way that they want to attain those goals is not realistic does that make any sense like if I have a conversation with someone, the amount of money that they want to make in a week or a month is usually very realistic. But the the speed of that they want to make that money or the amount of money they have to make that money is usually not realistic. Or like people starting out with these Robinhood accounts and have $2,000 and they want to make 100 grand in a month. That's not realistic, okay? Any questions here so far? So, Money management is important. We talk about this in the class. I use stops. I called them in the room. That's important too, because if a trade keeps going in the opposite direction, I don't want to lose an endless amount of money. So the stops help me. It protects me. It's the insurance. So I'm not going to lose, you know, if I take 3,000 shares of something, well, I'm not going to lose $10,000 in a, in, in a position. It's whatever I risk. Could be 2,500, could be 2,800, depending on how many shares I take but I don't wing it. I use a system and I do it as long as I've been doing it. <laughs> While I could wing it because I'm not good at reading something quickly and ascertaining what's happening in the gap live, I really don't wing it. I prefer to go through and do the work, go through the process. I like going through the process. It, it helps me feel good about the trade. It helps make it less stressful for me and keeping your stress level low when you're trading is very important. Okay, that's why you should never risk more than you, are, you have in your account that you feel comfortable with, that if the trade loses, it's not the end of the world and you won't have to refund your account. So ultimately what I'm doing is I'm following the footprints of institutional money in a gap. I'm looking for that. It's happening in the gap itself. And then I'm looking for it to continue on the live day. Because again, I'm always, always waiting to take trades on the live day. So again, how much time does it take to trade my system? You've got to be available in the morning if you want to day trade. And even if you're doing the options, the, most of the letters come out in the pre-market. So you have to be able to put the put the orders out, you know, if not ahead of the open or if you're not sure what the price is going to be or can't estimate it, you have to be able to take them into the open. But my focus is 100% on quality. Quality, quality, quality. I am looking for quality, not, you know, trading till 4 o'clock every day or doing a million trades, one or two. Any questions from anyone at all here? Rob, I see you in here. You were in the trial today. Did you do the diamonds or did you just observe? Um, we did Microsoft the other day. This was back at the beginning of February. Okay, Rob, observe. This is back at the beginning of February. We went long this as a call. This was earnings as well. Now, here was the letter. So I send out the trade in an email. See the time of the day here, it's 8.40. So if you're on the newsletter, boom, you get the trade. You would take the trade once the market opens. 235 strikes, it expired on the 5th. I called this out, this was cost. Cost was 525, 15 contracts. The risk was 78.75. Again, this is an advanced risk. So I'm risking more of the options because I want to be able to take bigger positions with more expensive stocks, and sometimes I'm holding them overnight for a bit to get bigger moves. But again, you could have taken one contract for $525, which is a nice move. Sold it at nine, again, profit at $56.25. Now here was this. So I called this on here on this day. So the stock closed here, gapped up, fell on the day. Initially the trade was down, then it had to pop. And it went, oh, here, you could have done two contracts, a beginner trade risk, risked 1,050, sold it at nine, you could have made 
It's a nice trade. So that was a nice call, an options trade. So you can use my system to do options or day trades. The day trading room is for day trades. The options newsletter is for options, okay? But you need more, you need to have more winners, okay, when you're trading than losers. You need to have more winning trades than losing trades. It means you really got to be right a lot. I mean, you, you, you just do. You, you have to be right quite a bit. And you also have to limit your losses. I think a lot of people don't use stops, and that has been a problem for people that have come to me that are new too. And, and uh, people that are doing swing trades get hurt doing that. They just take the trade. They essentially have no stop. They keep giving it room to work. People are doing that now with GME. They're giving it a lot of room, thinking it's going to go back up to 500. And there, some people are in options, some people are in swing trades. You, you have to use a stop. Like say, I'm going to kill this trade at this point. It's not working. Take the loss. Sometimes when you take the loss, you're better off. Okay? Not every trade is going to work. But you have to have more winners than losers. I mean, that is just what it is. Because you've got to cover your cost. Now, a lot of people have the free free platforms. Some people are paying platform fees. Most everybody has free um, commissions now, but there's still costs associated with trading, especially if you are paying a platform fee and you will have trades that lose. So the winners have to cover your losers, platform fees if you're paying them, and then you have to have money then to pay yourself ahead. You can't trade anything when there's no strategy there. And for me, when it doesn't meet my criteria, then I don't do anything on the day. It's really about getting that one quick trade, which is what we did today, but we went long, like I said, that one fast trade, boom, in, out, in, out. That's how you do it. Now, this was a chart of Google, again, talking about institutional money. What am I looking for? In this case here, the stock is moving higher, got bought. Stock closed here, gapped up, boom. Called calls in this here. Called calls in this, called calls in this again, I think on Friday, yeah. So I called two, two trades in this in the options letter, they both worked. So anyways, this is getting bought. How do I know? Again, I use my rating system and I predicted it was higher and it was right because the stock opened here around 2060. And where did it go up to? Well, it went above 2100, which was the strike of the calls and ran up higher. And then here, and today I don't have today's data, and it went even higher today. So it continued. It continued what? It continued getting bought. So institutions have been buying Google. And again, it's very expensive, but forget about the price. Forget about that completely, which, which, is, which is, you know, noticeable actually. It still was getting bought. Stock kept moving higher, unlike GME, okay? You see how those charts look very different. Cost was 21, this was not cheap. One contract would have cost you 2100, which is not nothing, but you know, again, you could take this if you have the money. Sold at 47, 2600. I called the calls here right before the open. And this was, and actually you still could have been in these, but this was a nice trade. In, out, boom, boom. Get the move, take it, get out. So again, you can trade options with as small as a 2000 account if you want. You do not need margin to trade options. But if you want to be in and out, in and out, in and out, active with margins, you do need to have your account set up as a margin account with a broker. <laughs> but what does it take to do this? What do you need to do this? You need a system. This is how I'm making all of these trading calls. I mean, like every day I'm emailing out stuff. Every day. It's almost like I, my assistant does the emails. I, I mean, I, I could send my assistant like 10 trades a day. It's like, it's like too much for him to even put in the emails. I'm calling so many trades. It's just, it's just been a very active time. And part of it is I'm home. I mean, I'm home a lot here now the last, you know, I guess we're going on almost a year with COVID. And I'm seeing the setups and there's not much to do here in New York, but make money. So if you've got time, if you've got the time to trade, I mean, it's a great time to learn and it's a great time to train and actually invest your money in something worthwhile that you can learn and use pretty much for the rest of your life. So I have a system that I use to trade the market and it's all based on gaps. It's based on socks gapping in the morning and I'm looking for that clear directional bias. That's what gives me the edge. I know where it's going to go, and I'm seeing it before the market even opens. So again, going back to what is a gap. 
It's an event that happens every morning in the market. Stocks that are closed overnight often have news come out or earnings or whatever, it could be a million things. While the market is closed, they're not trading. Then in the morning when it opens, it opens at a different price than it closed at the previous night. It could be up, it could be down. Sometimes it has a small move, sometimes it has a big move. But either way, it's trading that went off in those post and pre-market hours. And the gap is seen on the daily chart. The moves can happen very fast and the moves can also be very big, like you saw with the Netflix. That was a big move on the day or even the IBM, okay? And that's how you make money as one individual by taking a couple hundred shares or even a couple thousand shares. You can make several thousand dollars because you're in and out very nimbly when you get something like the Facebook that moves $4 plus in a day. That's why you don't have to have a couple hundred grand account to make money. You only need to get something that's good. I call it good, something that's good. It's a golden gap. It's something that's gonna have a big move, preferably a big move. But gaps are a very specialized strategy. It took me over three years to figure this out. And many people that are trading gaps right now or even teaching them other competitors out there one, they're not doing what I do at all because I created my own system, I own it. And two, there, many of them are doing things that are just completely wrong. And then even though sometimes they work, they lose more often and people get scared then of gaps and they don't understand them and then they tend to shy away from them. But for me, this is, this is like really the only way. In fact, I had, I had a broker tell me this once, this was years ago, say to me that he thinks it's the only way that anybody can make any money in the market longevity wise. He saw a lot of people just blow up as a broker with traders and he was insistent that this is the only way that a day trader can make money one because the moves are big and two because i really pinpoint it so well before the open to know exactly what to do because if you're looking for something like the market to give you the momentum or the playthrough meaning you have to have the market with you to get the train you've got to have the market falling to make money in a short you've got to have the market rallying all to make money in a long you're going to be all over the place because most people don't know how to read the market well now the market does gap, not every day, but a lot. And I read the market gaps to determine, not just if I'm gonna trade it, but to determine if I'm going to get the market to help me sometimes. Like for example, in the Netflix, okay. But I'm looking for trades that work without the market. But sometimes if I look at it, I say, well, we could get this to a bigger number today because the market might help us, all right? So gaps are a very specialized strategy, it's a niche. And this is the reason that you would come and learn from me. I have a, a niche, it's a skill set to predict that something's gonna go to this point. Again, I'm not predicting where it's going to gap, but I'm predicting it's gonna go to this point after I see the gap, okay? And it is a very professional way to trade because we're in and out in one minute, like I showed you. So you got to know what you're doing. Now, what is it about gaps that makes them so profitable? The big moves. And again, I prefer to short just because the moves happen faster in shorts. Longs take longer to move, but most of the moves that we do happen in the first 30 minutes of the day. So what's my process? I get up in the morning, I find a watch list, find the gaps, then I rate them. So the Golden Gap System is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade when, when you know, using the checklist. That's what you learn in the class. The checklist tells you what to trade and when. Okay, like when do you wanna do it or how do you wanna do it and where's the target? Like for example, the Disney today, the 190 was the target. It went there, you get out. And you can do longer term moves if you want to do swing trades. Now I'm not doing swing trades right now. For me, if I do an option out for two, three weeks, that's a long term move to me. It's really the same concept, the same strategy, the gap, but I'm just looking for a bigger number, bigger target. But I prefer to just take a trade, get out, book it. Take a trade, get out, book it. And then if I decide I can do another trade. If I decide that Disney's higher, maybe I'll do another trade, you know, later this week or whatever. But actually I think Disney has earnings this week. So I will probably wait to see what that does on the earnings. But success or failure of you, you personally, the choices you're making with your trading has everything to do with the quality of your system. Now. You have to have good money management. Like I said, you can't risk all your money in one trade. That's silly. But you still aren't gonna be successful if you don't have a good system. You're doomed, okay? You you know, and, and like I said, many of those traders that were doing the GME just lost tons of money or will lose tons of money. You have to have a system. It also helps you mentally to be more relaxed. 
you refer to the system. You go back to the nuts and bolts. You go back to the basics. It's technical analysis. I'm reading the chart. It's My system is based on advanced technical analysis in the gap. That's how I'm coming up with the points. That's how I'm figuring it all out. That's what you learn from me in the class. And the purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That I find that having pen, paper, having something right down next to me at the desk, it really helps me. A lot of people trade and it feels like gambling to them. And I think that's also the problem with the Robinhood app. People are gambling, do, 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 and they're taking positions. This, And then I think even somebody told me it like it dings and something goes off. It's like, you know, you have to look at what you're doing. Well, trading is fun. Making money is fun. Losing money, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. And if you want to make money, you have to take this seriously. There's too many people out there competing for the same cash. Like I said earlier, there's a big hunk of cash in the market and there's a lot more people competing for it than you're aware of there's only so much cash to go around okay that's why there will always be more losers in the market than winners and that's why if you want to be a winner you have to take it seriously this checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction the 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock and the system tells you how what and when how do you make money in the market Trade a strategy in a system that is profitable. Golden gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they focus on large momentum to trade. So after today's win, I don't know, I'm gonna run probably 65, 66% win ratio for the year with day trades. And I figured out through today with the options trades, although I didn't send the email out yet for that, I'm about 73% win ratio year to date for the options. So, you know, it's, it's you have to, like I said, you have to win more than you lose. It's just what it is. And part of winning is what? It's exiting the trade. You can't be up and never get out. Okay, trades don't go on forever. I could call something out for two weeks. It doesn't mean it's gonna go up every day, even if you're long it. Chart could look good, everything could look good. You could get up in the morning, boom. They're impeaching a past president and the market falls off a cliff or whatever. You have to book your profits when you're in a trade and you're up. So what stock should you trade? Stocks that gap and rate 20 points or more per the 26 point system, if you wanna learn it. Again, the class is this weekend. When do I trade them? Early in the morning when they set up and trigger. And as far as how much money you wanna make per day or per week or per month, you can ask me personally on the side, I have this much money, Melissa, what do you think I should do? I will tell you what my, in my opinion, what you should risk. But when you first do the class, everyone should start out with a beginner risk at least for the first week to see how they do, even if they have a million dollars in their account. You've got to get used to it. I don't think it takes long. And particularly if you're following me in the room, I think it makes it a lot easier. Okay, because I'm calling the trades live. I'm saying this number, stop, boom, get out, target, doom. And I added targets to the newsletter this year, which has been very popular as well. People are happy about that. And again, it's all in a chart. So I measure gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two, a big move in the day, three, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, I've got to have that, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So for me, I only trade gaps. I get it in the morning, unless it's an options trade later in the day, you must set your risk accordingly. Risk the same in every trade you take. You can risk the same in every option and risk the same as every day trade and they can be different amounts if you want, like I've done. But I think you should set your money goals for your profit taking very realistic at the beginning. And then if I tell you, oh, this rate's really good or something, then you can look for more. Like if I say this rate's 24 points and you know it's a really, really good one. Or if we have the market with us, okay? Which again, I talk about the market in the room every day. So I tell you what I think about the market every morning when I get up. One strategy is all you need to be successful though in the market. You do not need a general overall broad base view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. So you've got to learn how to read the price patterns and gaps and you don't need to do anything else because if your reason for, for doing this, if your whole purpose for trading is to make money, you will make money learning my system. It works. People are very successful with me. Now, that being said, not everyone that has done my class over the years is successful. Why? They quit. They get frustrated. They make mistakes and don't listen to what I say. Well, that's on them. But I will say that I've had a lot of people come back to me. People that did the class 2013, 2014, go someplace else, make the same mistakes, eventually realize that they should have stuck with me all along and end up coming back to me, coming back in the room or coming back on the newsletter. 
Sometimes people take a while to get rid of bad habits. People come to me, they have bad habits of things they did in the past. I don't criticize anyone for having bad habits. I have bad habits too. But, you know, I've learned over the years to put certain parameters in place to help me. And closing the room in the morning is one of those things that actually helps me. You know, I could sit here all day long and, and day trade from 9.30 to 4 up until 3.59. I would be exhausted mentally and physically. There's no point in it. Could I make more money? Yeah. It, would, I, would I be as sharp as a tack and as good at reading things and have as relaxed of a life? No. So you have to prioritize, you know, what you're doing. This is not like a like a like a race to the finish. It's a long-term thing that you have to look at it. It doesn't mean you can't make money right away. You can. You can make money the day after the class. You can make money this week if you want to come to the room for the trial and take the trades. But I suggest you wait till you learn it first. But the reality is that if you look at it as a long-term thing, not trying to make the money back the, the class cost, which the class costs seven grand. If you look at it like, I'm really gonna learn this, I'm really gonna get it, I'm really gonna do well with this, then you will take your time. You will ask me questions. You will ask me questions when you don't understand things. And I think some people have been hit over the head so many times uh, losing money in the market that all they care about is just you know making all this money that they lost for the last however many years as back as soon as they possibly can. And you just can't look at it like that. It's like, uh, I'm trying to think of another example. It's like if you went through, if you had a goal of something that you wanted to do, I don't know, sports or, 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 or let's say dating, Valentine's Day is coming up. I'm going to use an example of relationships. Say that you, you dated someone and, and, and they cheated on you. Then you dated another person and they cheated on you. And you just keep picking these wrong people. It's like you have, the, you have this terrible luck. You always seem to pick a loser and they hurt you or they use you or they, they, uh, you know, treat you terribly or whatever. That can happen a million times until you get it and you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to change what I'm doing here. I'm attracting the wrong type of person and I deserve something better. And I think with trading, a lot of times people just get in this, these habits of making bad decisions, bad decisions, bad decisions. And then they continue to make bad decisions like not taking a class, even if it costs a lot of money. They just continue to make bad decisions like the GME trades or piggyback on things that people talk about in webinars for free. You know, that's not gonna, making constant bad decisions isn't gonna get you to where you wanna be. Like if you're in a relationship with, a, with someone and it's not good, you break up with them, <coughs> you need to fix whatever's going on in your mind that you're attracting whatever this type of personality is. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here, hold on. How long have I been talking? <clears throat> Anyways, this, you, you people understand what I'm saying. So, you know, you, you, you kind of have to like be very introspective, you know, about your habits and your own process, I guess, when it comes to trading. And sometimes that's very difficult for people. You, I, I'm, I'm good at looking at myself. And I don't talk about it really with that many people, but myself. I talk about it in my own mind, but I'm very good at stepping outside of myself, looking at things, and then correcting them. But not everybody is, and it can be hard. This doesn't mean you hate yourself, you get mad at yourself, you berate yourself, call yourself a loser. No, everyone makes mistakes, okay? So kind of try to move outside of yourself to see the mistakes that you've been making and why you haven't been successful at this point with trading, if in fact you're not. But you probably aren't or you wouldn't be here listening to me. You know? Any questions, any comments? Learning from someone though, again, may cost you money up front, but it saves you money in the end. So can you earn a living trading? Yes. The success or failure though has everything to do with the quality of your system and your attitude. As I said earlier, you know, I felt very confident Tom Brady would win. It was his attitude. It was his attitude the minute that he quit the Patriots and went down to Florida. Whatever, whatever happened with that drama, with him leaving the Patriots, he was there for a very long time. He wanted to go to a new place and he wanted to go there for one reason only, to win. He could have continued to, to stay with the Patriots and play football. He wanted to win. So that was his goal. In your mind, when you get up and you say, I wanna win, I wanna be successful, I wanna do it, 
You know, you have to think, like, not like worry about the trade's going to lose. Yes, you put the stop in, but don't worry about it. You put the stop in, okay? It's just a trade. You have to have the mindset that you're going to be successful and actually do it. But it's a nice lifestyle if you can learn how to trade. Again, luckily, I'm, I worked from home before COVID, but I'm very, very grateful that I was able to continue doing what I'm doing, you know, all during COVID because really a lot of businesses in New York shut down. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, Phil. So anyways, the class is this weekend. It's February 13th and 14th, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. Email me if you want to sign up. Email me if you want a trial. The combo tuition is $74.99. This is with the trends course, which is Tuesday the 16th. Again, that class is online. So if you sign up for both the Golden Gap and the Trends, you save $500. I have a couple people sign up for this, so the Trends class will be on the 16th. Monday market's closed. Monday is uh, President's Day. Market closed to on the 15th. So that is that. Let's take a quick peek on the market and ask me any questions. And woo, and there we are. We broke out at 345. Look at that. Ay, 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 ay. Where did the diamonds end up? Ah, look at this. Yep. Very predictable. All right, any questions from anyone? Rob, do you have any questions for me? I mean, if you do, ask me now. I see some new people. Andy, you would email me. Do you have any questions? Raghu, I've seen you before. I don't know how long you've been following me. Calamity, I don't recognize seeing you before. Igor, I've seen you. You've been following me, I think, for a while. No questions? Look at this market. I have to look up and see if something created that lift or if it just just got bought again talk about institutional money look at this market market's getting bought it's breaking out okie doke have a wonderful night everybody email me if you like a trial email me if you want to sign up for the class and hopefully we'll get something good oh deets do you have a question deets is typing go ahead Market's just really strong. Okay, email me then if you want a trial. Okie doke. Have a great night, everyone. Stay safe.